All right, we're slowly pulling ourselves together here in the studio after Miss Ray's message, which if you missed, we're going to play it again at the end of the program. It was, it's a classic moment. Anyway, let's get serious about this. Now, Cabinet has received a progress report on the development of the cannabis and hemp sector and the cannabis master plan as part of government strategy to industrialize the cannabis sector. Now, the cannabis industry in South Africa has the potential to create thousands of jobs and, as mentioned, could be worth around 28 billion rand. However, the industry still faces major hurdles. It's almost two years since President Cyril Ramaphosa promised in his State of the Nation address to create the enabling conditions for the sector to grow, but not much progress has been made to create an enabling environment for all players to thrive. Now, to look at the state of the cannabis industry, we are joined virtually by the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee for Small Business Development, Faiz Jacobs, and an attorney and cannabis business consultant, Dan Marie Dugood. Great to have both of you. Thank you very, very much for joining us here on the program. Thanks for having us and great to be here. Absolutely. So let's, let's get the law out of the way here in South Africa. So, uh, Dan Marie, if I may begin with you, as, as far as we all understand, it is legal to possess cannabis, including seeds for personal adult use. It's also legal to grow your own cannabis, although the amounts are still sort of um, not really properly defined. But all trade of any part of the plant remains prohibited. Is that how the law stands currently in South Africa? Yeah, it's, um, that is a good summary of it. So in 2018, when the Constitutional Court decrim decriminalized personal possession, use and cultivation of cannabis, that really um, gave the industry a bit of a push and the start of the green rush, if I can call it that. Shortly after that, SAPRA followed with medical cannabis and related regulations in order to enable patients to access unregistered medicines, aka cannabis, um, through a medical process. And since then, we've also seen some variations of interpretations of the 2018 judgment as persons are trying to get hold of cannabis in a more mainstream type of way um, as businesses are also starting to develop, um, you know, around these interpretations as well. And it remains completely legal for you to use, possess and cultivate in private for your personal use. You don't need a special license or, or anything like that. But the moment you actually want to sell that cannabis and you want to trade with it, it becomes much more complicated. As mm. you've mentioned, it remains illegal to, um, to buy and sell and trade unless you have um, very specific licensing and a very specific industries okay so 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 Dan Marie let me ask you this as a follow-up follow question I mean do you think that the cannabis industry has received enough support by government um, uh, has government been doing its job in assisting the industry to move forward and create these opportunities that that clearly do exist I think that we have not seen sufficient urgency on the matter. And the reason I say that is the 2018 Constitutional Court judgment actually asked government to provide a full legislative framework within two years. We are now already beyond four or five years now. So um, they really haven't given it sufficient urgency. But on top of that, also, we are all really desperate to see job creation and economic stimulation for the country. And that's really what we want to focus on. And by only by formalizing an industry, will we be able to actually get to that point? Businesses, or more to say, investors are not really w willing to step into the industry without really good confidence in the industry, without formalization for the industry. And um, we have not seen any of that. We have now seen that the draft bill is um, being passed by the na by national um, assembly. It's now been passed by provincial level and it's now gone to presidential sign off. But this draft bill um, known as the private purposes bill really is about just personal use. It, mm. There is no mention of um, any sort of industrialization or formalize, formalization of industry whatsoever in that bill. And that is really what the, the business people within cannabis really are pushing for is to see formalization of industry. It's wonderful to see our users being more um, confident in their rights by having lo these laws brought in, but we're now really looking forward and desperate to see the industry and the business being developed around cannabis. Okay, so Faiz, this is now where I bring you into the conversation. I think we've really gotten a nice sort of uh, 
background into the law, how we can operate around it, what the promises have been, and how the industry is doing currently, and the assistance of government. And, and it appears that government has been very slow coming to the party when it comes to the cannabis industry. Why? What, what, what is the, what's hindering this? Thank you. I think uh, um, our colleagues uh, sketched a good uh, uh, context. So we did pass the Cannabis for Private uh, Purpose Bill uh, recently, and uh, as it said, it's, it's meant to decriminalize and also commercialize uh, the cannabis sector. I think there is challenges, and admittedly, we as a small business uh, portfolio committee in Parliament, we ha we summoned all the role players in the cannabis industry to understand what are the challenges and why is small business not getting the benefits from it. So I think it speaks to uh, putting the legislative frameworks. There's two departments, the one that uh, grants licenses for hemp, which is the Department of Agriculture, and then the license which grants medical cannabis is with the SAPRA. Now we need to understand that there is going to be a transition and I think that's what the, the challenge is. Um, we received a report from SAPRA and admittedly they are saying that the process is slow because uh, when you uh, issue a cannabis license they have to go through a whole range of, uh, of, of uh, steps and it makes it very difficult. Uh, we've, we've heard a report that says uh, only 107 applications were successful. Uh, of that, of only about flat, uh, seven of them were black owned. And it's predominantly your multinationals that are, are benefiting from it. So when we took the report, we heard that there's many, many, more than a million small scale growers mainly on your coastal um, provinces. Mm. And they're crying out for uh, regulation to ease uh, this. So I think it's going to take a, a process. I mean, we also calling for uh, an easier way, a, a, a bureaucratic free uh, process from these entities. So we ask them to come back to, to ensure that there is regulation because we agree with, with everybody. Uh, that the cannabis industry must work for for all our, our people, especially our small business and small gro growers. Yeah. Indeed, I mean, the, 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 there was the the cannabis master plan working groups and and work streams that were set up in in um, I think it was twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two somewhere around there. What whatever happened to that? Look, I think we need to we need to resuscitate that. I think a lot of us were trying to just get the bill through Parliament. And I think now the next step is to actually uh, implement a lot of the uh, the steps that has been taken through the master plan. The master plan on paper is, is, is really good. And I think for us, we realize the importance of the cannabis and hemp industry and the whole value chain. But there's a lot of advocacy that's still needed. So we need to translate the, the, the opportunities and overcome the challenges. I mean, some of the challenges that we picked up was access to finance, that uh, small businesses find it very difficult to access and to pay the licenses, uh, access to growing, access to markets. So there's a lot of um, uh, advocacy that is still needed. I mean, we are calling for small black a community and cooperatives that must be driving this process because historically that has been uh, uh, the constituencies now we don't want to deny the multinationals the big revenue that uh, export driven uh, opportunities will create for our country but we also want to formalize and ensure that we we get a tax base and at the same time we we we, we commercialize the the current industry uh, the cannabis industry mm. um uh, so uh, dan marie what are the obstacles faced, if we can do it quite, quite quickly? We're running into time constraints. I mean, there are so many that I, I'm reading about, but l let's perhaps look at the main ones, that the, the constraints that our, our private businesses are struggling with, growers, entrepreneurs, they face immense obstacles in getting their product onto the market. Absolutely. Um, and, and this is what we mean with formalization. Mm. So for many industries, for example, um, I hate using this comparison sometimes, but it is convenient. For example, with the alcohol industry, um, you have a fully fledged value chain. You have your licensed producers, your licensed retailers, you have your consumers that understand whom they can legally buy from. Um, and that, that and these industries are then formally partaking in the industry. But the, the problem with this is, first of all, um, the normal business challenges that all South Africans are facing as small businesses. We are really in tough economic times. Um, there's, we need investors, we need investor um, confidence, and we need access to finance. And 
if the more resources you have, the easier it naturally is to get into business. But we need to assist those who, who do not have access to such financial structures. Very much a big problem. We also see, as pointed out, there is still a lot of um, in discrepancies with regards to who is participating in the industry right now. And that will also be much better um, targeted once formalized. We can really bring in formal triple BEE policies. We can bring in financial bonding structures. We can really bring in commerce, um, commerce um, type of regulations and safety regulations. These sorts of things can come in, but they're not readily available. And mm -hmm. right now what that means is that you are either full if you are buying and, and selling or trading within cannabis you are likely within the medical field which is highly regulated highly expensive and, and very complicated you really need to ensure that um, you're operating at a lab level um, and that that is the pharmaceutical industry as we expect it to be um, from there you know you also as mentioned you do have the hemp industry much more focused on agriculture as well as industrial uses but here our farmers, as I like to call them, really struggle, for example, um, because our African sun keeps pushing the THC levels very high in the yeah. hemp. Yeah. And for your produce to be considered legal hemp, it has to have a very low THC mm. um, molecule um, testing. So, for example, those are the, the hemp industry challenges. And as mentioned, recreational is still very much in a gray area of law. There's Indeed. interpretations of the judgment that people are using to access recreational products. Um, and, and that's really leaving a lot of confusion with consumers um, as well as they are unsure what is really legal, what's not legal, and how to safely access these products at the end of the day. Indeed. I, that THC conversation is an interesting one. I mean, the, the, the uh, it, overseas, it's usually... Um, at 1%, our threshold is sitting at 0.2%, which, as you say, is very, very difficult in, in the area that we're in. And then there's massive prison sentences if you're found in, in, in violation of any of this. So, Faiz, wrap this up for us. I mean, in, in June 2023, there were only around 93 licenses, if I'm not right, wrong, granted by the, the uh, South African Health Products Regulatory Authority. There's so many concerns raised about these legislative barriers and licensing red tape. Uh, why is it that some farmers in rural areas of the Eastern Cape are, are, are still sitting waiting for these licenses. No, it is a big, uh, a big problem. Uh, like I said, about two weeks ago, we, we summoned all of them in, in Parliament over the oversight. I think let me just start with the with the uh, the the uh, criminal expunging. I think we we know that this hundreds if not tens of thousands uh, of people that are having a criminal record just by possession and and we are calling for uh, the expansion of this because it it takes a uh, it just takes a toll on our people i think for us the additional recommendations that we made to supply that they must they must streamline the regulatory and license uh, requirement they are very helpful but they're just very slow and i think we asked them to watch the steps and try to come back to us and simplify the steps also we need to have a special dispensation for small growers so uh, we need to have a legislative framework and i agree and maybe we should get all the experts in but it's also we need to break down the stigma attached with the hemp and cannabis industry it's not just for for smoking there's a lot of the disability there's a there's a whole range of value chain and it's going to be beneficial and we we need to ensure that it is the re regulatory environment is supporting us currently we have a stop start uh, arrangement and i think it's a start but i think more needs to be done and uh, i i uh, i'm the first one to admit but i think there's a lot of education and capacity building that's needed we need to educate uh, potential entrepreneurs about the legal aspects because we also want to take our communities away from the criminal economy and try to formalize them, try to get them registered, try to get them uh, like a formal business uh, a, a business establishment, look at the business opportunities and, yeah. and all of that. Um, and I think for me also infrastructure support is going yeah. to be key. How we, uh, we crowd in the, the processing facilities, uh, collaborative efforts uh, and the private part, public partnership. So I think we will continue okay. with the advocacy and the lobbying. Thanks. All right, Flayers, I have to leave it there. This, I, there's so much to talk about. There really is. A, 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 a Dan Marie Duguid, an attorney and cannabis business consultant. Faiz Jacobs, chairperson of the Portfolio uh, Committee on Small Business, discussing the state of the cannabis industry in South Africa. We have to leave it there. Thank you very, very much for joining us, everyone.